So you're out doing a little watercolor sketching, plain air maybe, don't want to take a lot of water with you, why not let your brush carry it? Hello everybody, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. You know, I thought maybe we'd talk a little bit today about water brushes, but hold on a minute. Reese, what you doing? Reese. He's farting again. Well, anyway, several months ago when I started this channel, I had really not used water brushes much. I, I knew about them. I considered them mostly a crafting tool, you know, something that card makers, rubber stampers, that's the type of thing that they use. But as I started trying them out, my opinions are changing now. I mainly use them as a light grab-and-go sketching tool for outdoors plain air or sketching on location. And I think they're absolutely great for that. So I've acquired a few. And in good mind to watercolor fashion, I'm going to give you my thoughts on some of these. All right, so this is your typical water brush. Performance wise, they're all pretty close. There's a tip, which is, which all of them are made out of pure nylon, really. There's no like natural hair. Um, because the moisture flow is regulated, they don't need anything but nylon to dispense the moisture and hold the pigment. They all have a, a regulator body of some sort that dispenses. They all then have an empty barrel cavity for which to hold the water. So it's very simple, but effective design. This one is called the Niji. It's Japanese made water brush. I think most of them are actually. Plain tip and chisel tip. This is the Sakura Koi. And this is the Pentel Aquash. I actually found this in a calligraphy section. And I just ordered these to, to try them out. This is a Derwent. It's actually a three-piece set. It has a large, a small brush, and the small chisel tip, if you, if you can see that. Just a buying tip. I, I haven't found any reason to buy the small, to be honest with you. I did buy a small in the Pentel, and the Derwent came with a small in the set. They all hold a pretty good point, and well, I'll demonstrate that in a minute. You can buy one of the small points if you want, but I didn't see an advantage to it. The, the bigger body lets you do bigger washes and then go down to a point all with the same brush if you want. The amount of stuff you're carrying with you when you're in the field matters, then you're down to one brush, maybe two if you get a chisel tip rather than three or four. We'll start with the Niji. And we'll also talk about just general characteristics that they all have as we go along too. We'll also talk about some tips and techniques. Now one thing about all of these is obviously, or it should be obvious anyway, the brush tip is always wet. What was surprising to me about water brushes is that you have a lot of control and you have a lot of differential that you can achieve in the wetness from extremely wet washes to almost dry brush. So you can go into your palette, your brush is already damp, um, and it, it's, it's usually just damp. It's usually not like brimming with moisture. With just a slight squeeze, you can moisten the brush a little bit. You don't even necessarily see it, but you'll get a little more water in your brush. You want a lot of water, you squeeze really hard here and it becomes like an eyedropper. Hopefully you can see this. Now I've got a lot. And all of the brushes work pretty much the same in that regard. Now if I want to, uh, and I can get my, my pigment really concentrated here while it's very wet, it, it's good just to have a paper towel or a rag nearby and then you just blot it out. And then you can go back and just pick up a little bit if you want. So if you're doing a flat wash, it's pretty easy with a, as, as it is with a regular brush. If I want to graduate that wash, I would, I would go over here, probably press a little bit of water through to rinse my brush, and then graduate out that wash. The large Niji here doesn't seem to have the finest point. 
Now this is a fine brush, I like it. I also noticed that the Niji tends to regulate its water a little stronger. In other words, it keeps a little more moisture in the brush than some of the others. So if you're trying to achieve a dry brush effect, which you would do by blotting out, it's harder to do with the Niji because it almost immediately rewets all the fibers. So no matter which brush you pick, it's just a matter of, of getting used to the feel and the amount of moisture regulation that it has. For instance, if you're in an art store and this is the only one you find, by all means, pick it up. It's a very good water brush. The next one is the Sakura Koi. This was actually the first water brush I bought. This is their large version. A comment in general about all water brushes, the, the nylon bristles will stain. They usually come just pure white. They will stain. The staining makes it hard sometimes to tell if you have pigment in them or not. All you have to do though is just wipe it. And every now and then you may just want to run these under the faucet. Or, but if you're on location already and you want to cleanse them out, just squeeze some water out and then push it around in there and blot it out on a towel. Keep in mind they will stain and that's normal. It does seem to be possible to get this nib drier. So if I want to do a dry brush effect, I can blot it and almost get a dry brush effect, which might be useful. That was very difficult to do with the Niji. Sakura Koi, very good brush. All right, the next one is the Pentel. And it's called the Aquash. This is a really nice brush. And I've heard other artists that use water brushes, they tend to gravitate towards this one. It produces your best point, I think, your finest line. I can get literally a hairline without going to a thinner brush. If I'm going to take one brush out, I would probably take this one. The moisture regulation is excellent. I could blot it down to almost dry. The squeeze out, you get a nice precise drop and it, it's pretty easy to regulate your squeeze. So if you want to use your aqua brush to do some wet and wet, that's really not a problem. Now I want to lift, then just blot it out and you'll be dry enough to, to pick up a lot of that excess moisture. If you want to, again, just like with the Niji, if you want to graduate that wash out, it's a matter of of getting enough pigment through your brush to cleanse it so you're dealing with clear water and you can graduate it out. Beautiful. You know, this is the thing about these water brushes is they just had a lot more control. I always thought they were a gimmick and uh, they have a lot more control than I was expecting. But with a little practice and just kind of changing the paradigm in your thinking, you can do pretty much everything you can do with a regular brush. Size limitation, of course, is, is a big thing. This, this Niji, Niji chisel tip, I'll go back up here to the Niji section. That's about the biggest one I've seen. Um, if any of you out there have seen a bigger one, let me know. But But it's pretty cool. So the Niji's got that going for it. But for point and fineness of tip, I really like this Pentel Aquash a lot. And it's got a compact barrel. I like the uh, oblong kind of body. It's It's got a nice handhold feel to it. All right, so that leaves their, the Derwent. I bought this Derwent as a set, just to try them out. 
They are numbered one, two, and three. The one is the fine point. The number two is the larger one. Pretty much relates to the aquash, the Pentel aquash in size. Has good moisture regulation. I can blot it down, it's almost dry. I can get a fairly fine point. Not quite as fine as the Pentel, but almost. What I like about the Derwent set is this little chisel tip here, the smaller. That's pretty cool. Can actually do lettering with it. So it's, it's similar to a calligraphy tip. Blot it out to dry. It might make a good blender. I haven't really experimented with a chisel tip much, but I plan to. So if you want to, if you haven't bought a water brush and you want to do it, um, just experiment with the type of marks and strokes you can make. Almost, other than size and really large, expansive washes, there's really nothing that you can't imitate with a regular brush, water, and palette. You know, really get out and experiment with the strokes. Now, the, the final thing I want to mention is aqua brushes are really a fantastic companion to watercolor pencils. I believe watercolor pencils work best as a drawing medium. You know, consider what you're doing as a drawing and then go in with your, your water brush and just add tone here and there. Don't let the character of the pencil disappear. It's much more fun to leave that pencil character and just use something like a water brush to add tone where you can or where you want to. That makes these a really good companion. I hope that gives you a good overview on water brushes and you know the ones that I've tried so far and we'll give you some ideas about which one you might want to buy or which one you might not want to buy, uh, what you can do with them. Uh, give them a try. They're really a lot of fun. Finally, dude, you done flirting over there? We're pretty much done with this show. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you've got any suggestions about water brushes, maybe brands, I, there are other brands I didn't even mention, so maybe you have a brand you've tried and liked, or if you have a tip that you'd like to share, do so down in the comments. That'd be great. Now, I have a video right here, right over here somewhere I'm going to put the link to. That's a chickadee I did completely in watercolor pencil and water brush. So that's, if you haven't seen that, that's a demo you might want to watch. And I hope your water brush experiences are fun. And I'm looking forward to some warmer weather, hopefully not too far in the future. And I'm going to get out and do some sketching with a water brush. So stay tuned for some videos like that. Guys, we got lots more coming. I got some other product reviews. I mean, just as a teaser, Windsor Newton watercolor markers. Uh-huh. That one's in the works. Hope to get back to actually doing some painting. I haven't had a lot of time for that, but I will get back to it. Thank you for subscribing. There are so many more of you out there watching now, and it's just been great. I am so thankful to you guys. So hang in there. This video was a help to you. I hope you'll like. I hope you'll subscribe. If you want to support me monetarily, you can do that. You can go to my main channel page, and there's a way to do that there. Either way, whether you watch or donate, still supporting me. Thank you. We'll see you next time.